Yay, I think it went live, finally. <laughs> Having to run around like a chicken with my head cut off tonight, guys. Had lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff to do. Yay, hopefully you guys can hear me. I am going to play the intro here in just a second. I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to come in and we'll get started. Thank you for that sound check, Jamie. Yay! Took it a few minutes. I had to reboot last minute and get everything to go and then YouTube was going to be a little bit slow. All right. Looks like we've got some people coming in. So I am. Hi, Princess Disa. Uh, I am going to go ahead and play the intro so that we can get started. You guys see my beautiful flowers? Uh, Sue, Sue C, thank you so very, very much. She sent me some flowers. I can't tilt them over and show you the whole thing, but they are gorgeous because um, I don't want to spill water on our project for tonight. But she sent me some flowers for hitting the 100,000 members in the group. And I want to thank everybody for being a member thank you for subscribing thank you for uh, being a patreon or Kofi supporter or a moderator and sharing your time and helping me I, I greatly appreciate every one of you so make sure that you give the thumbs up don't forget that thank you Jamie and um, even after the video is over guys you can come in and you can comment things like that on the videos that boosts us up with um, YouTube so I greatly appreciate it when you guys do that as well. I may not always respond to every one of them right away on YouTube, but I will get to it eventually if you just give me some time. Sometimes it takes me a few days. Hi, Marianne. Louise. Everybody's here. Yay. Gerald. Guys, as always, if you have any questions, put them in caps so that the moderators can see them and they're going to help you and... Um, Anything that they can't, that's not clear for you, let us know. We'll show you on screen. Always ask your design space questions anytime. We'll get to those. Tonight we are, oh, before I forget, giveaway started, guys. If you go to craftingwithapril.co, go to the giveaway tab, and you can get in on that giveaway we are giving away the focus is blurry okay i will work on that while i'm talking about this um our giveaway is for a i'm looking at the wrong screen here give me just one second guys the giveaway is for um the cricket Easy Press Mini Bundle. How's that, Jamie? That look good? Um, that's for the Easy Press Bundle. And if you've already got the Mini Easy Press, don't worry. You can get the 6x7 if you want. You can pick which one that you want. Um, so it's a either or. You get to choose which prize that you get. Um, so make sure that you go over to craftingwithaprilco and subscribe. These stipulations are you must be a uh, Cricut Maker Projects member. You must be subscribed to the YouTube channel. And those are the two stipulations. Um, you do have to register on my site to get to the giveaway tab, I believe. Um, so um, I appreciate that as well. And that will also get you notified when mystery boxes and things like that come out. Then 
if you want to earn extra entries, which I did because this is only, we're going to announce it on Monday. So this is going to end at midnight Monday, which is actually Sunday night. And then we're going to draw on Monday evening during our live for the winner. So you can gain extra entries for that by tweeting to other people to subscribe to the YouTube channel and um, also becoming a Twitter follower on Crafting Cricut. So extra ways to earn your entries. Only two of them are required. Cricut Maker Projects. Well, actually three. You have to be you have to register on my site. You have to be a member of Cricut Maker Projects, which most of you are. And then you have to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Three easy things. Um, so, next, let's see. Okay. We had requests to show how the foil quill worked. I'm going to go over to my monitor, guys. I literally just finished cutting this file <laughs> and I didn't cut the box intentionally because I'm using that to show you guys how to use the foil quill. Now that being said um, and these files are for supporters and they are in the I'm going to cancel this because I had already cut part of it. Um, they are on craftingwithapril.co on the 2020 supporter file tab. We did split that up. So I just want to show you guys how we made it easier for you over there. Let's pull that over. There we go. And we don't need that. Here is where you will find the files if you are a supporter. If you're not a supporter, you can go to Patreon or Kofi and become a supporter. You on Kofi, you can do one-time support. You will get any files that I release to monthly um, one-time supporters. I do not release that many to one-time supporters. Most of them are monthly. But if you subscribe like today and you want tonight's file, I will give it to you. Uh, just let me know on Messenger that you subscribed and I will give you those links. Um, if you join on Patreon, you're going to have access to it. If you're a Kofi Monthly, you're going to have access to this tab, this tab, this one, this one, and this one. If you are not a supporter, you have access to these files and the file request. File request means the two files that I currently give away. Um, and the two files that I currently give away are... Oops. I'm on the wrong tab here. There we go. The ones that I currently give away are this purse file and this Mickey earrings with the card. Those are the only two files. So if you go to file request and request tonight's tab and you're not a uh, tonight's file and you're not a supporter, I can't give it to you guys because that is something reserved special just for them and they that's what they get for being a supporter. So please, if you're requesting files, make sure you're requesting what is available because I do not give out supporter files on that. Okay. Um, and then, of course, here's your giveaway tab. All of the rules for the giveaway are right here. The short rules, the official rules, and what we're giving away. And it's either or, as you can see right here, you may opt for the 6x7 instead. Uh, you don't get both. Um, all our privacy policy releases, and here is where you enter. You will either log in or use your email. We will be notifying you on YouTube when we draw, and by email, if your email bounces back, we're not going fight, to fight for it. We're just going to draw a new winner. So make sure your email is correct. Okay. That's all said, so everybody knows where everything is at on here. So just so you know, we did change it up because everybody was saying it was hard to find these files uh, in that drop down, and I couldn't control how it was looking. Um, that is something done by Weebly. They wouldn't let me make it bold or give me a bigger drop down menu. They just it, there was nothing I could do about it. It was just teeny tiny and light, and so I did away with it. Those were my choices. <laughs> so now that we have that, let's go over to 
swing design. This is where I got my foil quill, and I will, I don't know if it will give this to you guys, but there should be a link down below on swing design. Um, you can buy silhouettes, you can buy 3D printers, you can buy Cricut machines, you can buy tons of stuff over here. Uh, vinyl, 751 vinyl, all sorts of things uh, from screen printing, all of that. But the main thing that everybody likes is that you can make payments with Swing Design. Um, very easy um, and to do. Let's see, that's the one I want, the foil quill. It just magically popped up there. It knew that's what we wanted. Oh, and it took me to Easy Press Bundles. There we go. So the foil quill kits, just so you know, because some people have multiple machines, some do not. You can buy it um, differently, and now the new pens are out. So if you use the foil quill for your machines, you will void your machine warranty. It's not the hype that we're telling you guys about third-party tools. When we tell you that a third-party tool will void your warranty, it's because Cricut said it will void your warranty. Um, and they, and I'm about to show you how serious they are about that. Um, these are the pins. They don't connect to your machine, so you can do those, and then you can draw and trace over them, things like that, or use freestyle drawing, whatever you want to do with those. It does come with several adapters, and those adapters are for different machines. You have A, I think, is for um, the Silhouette, B is for the Brother Scan and Cut, and C is for the Cricut. And I'm on the Freestyle. I don't want the Freestyle. I want this one, I think. So you have this, and it comes with a magnetic mat, so if you're not cutting, I do not suggest that you cut on your magnetic mat, but if you just want to have it draw and place it on there like you do with snap mat, you can do that. But it comes with all the adapters, everything you need. You can use the Affirm and do like three payments of 25 bucks if you want to do that, three monthly payments. Um, comes with everything. But if you look right here, Cricut users, please read this before you purchase. And when you open it up, it's going to tell you, and this came out last year, that the foil quill used the Cricut on the front of the package, making it seem like it was okay to be used with the Cricut. Cricut cleared that up. I'm not going to read this whole thing. You can go in and read it. I just wanted to show you where it was at. They do extensive testing and um, they tell you that third-party tools essentially attempt to perform the same or similar for machine voltage, da 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 da, um, and it can void your warranty. So, just so you know, make an informed decision. Do what you want to do. Don't let anybody talk you in it or out of it. It's totally up to you. There is an option with the freestyle, okay? My machine is out of warranty. I love the foil quill personally. Um, I haven't had any problems with it, so, um, but I am not by any means telling you guys to go out there buy this and void your warranty. I am not going to do that. Um, you're going to have to make your own decisions once you see how we work with it. But if you choose to buy it, I hope that you will use my link. I will earn a small commission if you do. So, as with any of my links, I, I truly appreciate that. That's what enables us to do giveaways and things like that. And yes, I want to cancel that. I'm coming out of this. I will show you guys how to lay this one out. Um, we're going to put it together, but I will show you how to lay it out. Now, in this file, guys, that little love right there is very tiny. I'm going to show it to you here in just a minute. You may want to opt, like I am tonight, for changing that out. I got really lucky, and I will show it to you um, where I cut it yesterday. But when you open this file and make it, save yourself some room. You can use pens if you don't want to use the foil quill. It's set to draw, and that's the way we do the foil quill. You set it to draw, okay? You can turn these pieces and get them in there, and then come over to mat two, get the other piece that has foil on it. So we're going to move that to another mat and bring it over. 
and then we're going to slide it down it will fit now this other piece will not fit in here I tried um, this piece doesn't fit in here you can see so this was the best I could get it but you can cut this on a few sheets of paper or in even scraps okay so this one will have to be cut and I cut this out of the piece from my box that's in another file so you're not wasting paper just let it cut in that top corner and we're going to use the rest of this for our little treat box so it's going to cut out the same color um, you can cut that out of a scrap or cut it with a die like I did this is you can cut out of a scrap you probably already have one that size and then these pieces you're going to move that one up there and save that paper Okay, and I'm cutting this from double-sided paper so that I can flip mine over. If you're not cutting from double-sided paper, you may opt to cut this piece from a different color, your heart. So that's how that one is laid out. And let me cancel that again, come back. And then I am going to go to my projects. And I'm going to get the box. And I'm just going to hit Customize. I'm going to Replace. Okay. And so I am going to show you guys how to cut and lay out this piece after we put the box together using the foil quill. Well, actually, let's go over to the desk and I'll show you everything and on the overhead. And then we'll come back and I'll lay this out and show you guys how we lay it out. You can see we're going to cut this just like it is. Let's hit make it. And I am studying where this is. And this falls just right at the three inch line on my mat down to the just below the six inch line so i'm going to say from two and a half to seven okay so let me write down my measurements i'm just going to write it on a little scrap here two and a half to the seven and then I am going to look at my top lines, and it is between the 2 and the 3.75. So I'm going to say between 2 and 4. Okay, that is the location of this drawing. Now, if you're doing pins, you don't have to do this. If you're using the foil quill, you will need to know where that's going to land. Okay, so just remember where I said it was going to be. I'm just going to hit continue. And I'm going to go ahead and select my material so I don't forget. Um, and I am using a AC. No, not AC. I'm using. I forgot what cardstock I'm using. Yes, it is. I'm right. AC cardstock is what I'm using. And for some reason, I don't know if it's the humidity here, I need more pressure when I do mine on the AC. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Yesterday I did, tonight I cut one piece and it was, it cut, but it was like on the verge of not cutting quite through in a couple of spots. So I'm going to give it more pressure and it tells me to load my black pen and my scoring wheel. And I'm going to use my double scoring wheel instead of my single because this is heavy card stock. Um, it's, it's one that's really popular with uh, Leo at Dreaming Tree and I like it too. So I'm going to use my double scoring wheel even though it says my single. If you are using the pen, use the pen. And if you're using the foil quill, I'm going to show you how to do the foil quill once we move over to the other camera. So this is what we're doing. Here's our little box and you can see the foil quill where I drew that on this box here. I used some stickers and some ribbon. But this is out of that paper. We're doing a little bit darker box tonight. I'm a little bit off camera. Sorry. Let's get that down here. You can see that. And then we have the card. And this is my mock-up. I did make a few changes. So guys, don't pay attention to it not meeting in the middle. I think I fixed it and we're about to find out. But when you pull this, it opens up and it creates this shadow box. Okay? And I... You can see the foil quilling on that back panel and the front panel there. This is that love that I cut out. Super, super, super tiny, teeny tiny. And it cut out of my cardstock, but it was iffy. Um, and then I had to put black on it anyway to cover my white edges because I used a white core cardstock. So make sure that when you're cutting that, that you're cutting it from a 
cardstock that you can use that's going to be heavy enough or either use a die or just change it out for whatever image you want to use. So I've already, I'm going to get rid of this mat. I got three mats going here, guys. So people say, why do you need extra mats? I, I do two or three mats. This, I've already foil quilled this. This is the card. And you can see where my score wheels left impressions of my foil on there. Don't panic if that happens to you. This was actually heated and this was heated. This has not been heat set, okay? Because the foil quill is hot. So I'm gonna take a gum eraser and anywhere that my foil got on there with my scoring wheels, anywhere that it ran over it, star wheels, anything like that, you can take your gum eraser and it's gonna come right off, okay? So it's done. You don't have to worry about that. So I will peel this off as we get ready to use it. Next is the box. And I know that it's going to cut up here. I'm going to go back and double check to make sure that I'm in the right area. Yeah, it's going to cut out of here with no problem. Six inches over. Oops. I'm looking at my screen just to make sure that this the tail of my box is going to fall in this area. So I've got one, two. It's down to the nine inch which is right here within the four inch. So I'm good. It's, it's going to cut out of here with no problem. So like I said, you can use extra pieces. Now I wrote on here that my foil needed to be at the two and a half to seven inch mark going horizontally and from the two to four going vertically. And I, guys over, you saw over on Swing Design, you can buy all colors of the foil um, and it comes in the big rolls. These are some of the little rolls that I got and um, I haven't used them yet. So I didn't want to cut off a new roll of that silver. So I'm just going to cut off a piece and it only needs to be a couple of inches wide. I'm not going to sit here and measure it out, make sure it's exact. I think I got it right. Oops. I want to stick it to my mat. So I need to come between the two and the four and down to the two and a half inch because I gave myself some allowance and I need to make sure that it goes down to at least the seven and it's down to the eight. So I'm good right there. I'm just going to get some washi tape. Now they do give you some. Personally, uh, the washi tape that they gave me was really tacky and it did tear some cardstock I was working on once. So I use some of my older stuff that doesn't have as much stick. So that's totally up to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to place our foil in position and I'm going to just tape it down. Wherever you have tape, and I'm going to show you because I did make a boo-boo in my rush tonight. Wherever you have tape, if that foil quill hits it, you're not going to get a good um, foiling. I can't get it off my finger. It wants to fight with me. You want it as taut as you can get it. And the reason being, see how that's lifting up? That will kind of, it'll do it, but sometimes it'll get hung on your, on your bar and stuff. It'll drag. And I'm just taking a small piece and I'm just going to tape down on that edge and on this edge. Just to hold it, nothing major, because my major design is going to be right here. And I want to keep the tape out of the way. Okay. Yay. Welcome. Deb is in snowy Kansas. Now, that being said, one of the reasons that you want to be extremely careful using your foil quill, and I know if you're in the groups you've seen, I've broken my pen adapter, and they're out of stock. Can't get them. Be extremely careful removing this from your machine because they are out of stock. And if you break these prongs, your pins are going to wobble and they're not going to stay in there. They're not going to they're not going to work correctly. OK, so you have to be extremely careful. 
and I'm not trying to make you guys dizzy or sick, so shut your eyes for a second. I'm going to bring you over to the machine. Hopefully I can get it to stay in position here. That's pretty good. So clamp A, your accessory clamp, this goes in with the prongs down and snaps in just like your pins. But you want to be careful that this is the way it is when you start. You open your clamp. You want to push from the bottom gently with your finger flush and then pull up with this. Don't try to just snatch it out from the top because that's how people break the prongs. And you want to remove that. The foil quill does get hot. This is the piece. They have a little plate that goes on there while it's heating up. However, I don't use that. It will have a light on it when it comes on, and it takes it a few minutes to heat up. Okay, so I'm just going to lay this to the side. I keep mine hanging off to the side um, so it's not touching my machine at all, but there is a plate that goes under here if you want to put it in there and let it heat up. So while that's heating up, I'm just going to set this over here and get it ready. We're going to go ahead and start putting the card together. Just give that a few minutes. Again, I don't mean to make you guys dizzy. I'm sorry that I have to move the camera. I don't have a third camera at this point. I could have cleaned that up a little bit. I had a little bit more foil I didn't clean off. So any of those little foils that come off from your foil when you put it on there you can get that off of there. I'm just going to bend my mat, start removing my pieces carefully, and you'll have some extra pieces guys from the cutouts on these which you can always use for other projects and decor. Get the little hearts there. Don't waste anything. You can use it. This is a brand new mat, so I'm being extremely careful. I should probably be using my spatula, but I'm not. You want to be careful taking this piece off because this piece is the whole framework mechanism for your card. There we go. And that's all of those pieces. And you can see there's plenty of stuff here for cutouts. That being said, my paper choices on the last two cards have not been good. Um, you can see that my foil is not showing up very good there, and I had a one little place where the tape, or two little places, where the tape was covering it, and it didn't foil really well. But like I did with this one, because it didn't show up well with the pen either, I just put a tag on here, and you can stamp on this or put whatever you want on it. I just opted for the dots because I really didn't need the sentiment. So you can change the sentiment out or remove it all together off this frame if you guys want to. Now if I can remember how this goes together. <laughs> You're going to fold back these tabs and you want to get it good and straight. I'm holding my thumbnail and then I'm just going to take my bone folder and crease it really good. And then there's a tab here. You're going to fold that in. So this is the way that it's folded, so you can see. I'm going to press that in. And again over here, just going to bring it back, line up my thumb holes, give it a press, and then I'm going to fold that. And hopefully I get that straight. Don't pay attention to my scratch. My dog jumped up on me last night and got me good. So that piece is done. Then we've got these pieces with the holes in them. And if I'm not mistaken, it's a valley fold, I mean a mountain fold on the main line with your large slit to the back and then a valley fold 
for the front. And if I'm wrong, we're just going to have to fold them back the other way. And it probably won't hurt to do that anyway, just to give it a good crease. So it should look like that. And then you have another one. And same thing, this is going to be on the large side, on the large slit, you're going to fold that piece back. And then you are going to mountain fold the large piece here. Valley and Mountain. And I'm just going to give it another, I'm going to go back the other way with it just to Get it to break down because this is heavy cardstock and this is cut on the wrong grain. I cut it on the grain of my papers. If your paper cracks like that, guys, for those of you who don't know, if you get a crack in the paper like that, it's because it's going against the grain. If you can check your paper by bending a corner of it on or the side, bending it long ways, and if it cracks, you want to turn it around depending on which way you're score lines are going and I didn't take the time to do that so I got a little bit of cracking going on with those but that will help alleviate some of it and then we have the back piece and I still haven't decided which way I want to do this yet I think I like the lighter backing I hope I didn't shorten that piece too much. It doesn't look like it. Looks like it's okay. Uh, nope, maybe I have it the wrong way. That's what it was. Had it the wrong way. Make sure you check that piece. Okay. And I'm just lining up these two pieces to make sure that they are in the right position. Make sure my long tabs are to the back doesn't matter which direction it's going at this point but I'm just going to hold that in place make sure it's even let's do it like this make sure your pieces are even just like this doesn't matter if your holes are going up and down uh, on this side or this side as long as they are you don't have one one way and one the other they all need to be at the top or the bottom so I'm going to line that up, just let it sit there, and I think I do want the light to be back there. And I'm going to get my art glitter glue, and I'm just going to put it on these tabs right here. That's the bottom, so I want to make sure I'm going the right way. Check your pattern paper. Just going to lay it in there. And I'm going to fold that tab over and glue it. Fold this one over. I'm going to glue that too. And I wanted these to meet in the middle because I had the issue when I did it the other way and I just glued it one on each side. You can see it doesn't meet properly. So make sure that your cardstock, because different cardstocks are going to be different thicknesses, and you can see that this one doesn't quite go all the way up to that score. And I don't have enough glue on it either. I'm going to flip it back over. This one glued. I got one that popped loose. I didn't have enough glue. Don't really have enough on either one. Just gonna glue it again and then we'll put it back down. Spread that glue out a little bit. That's better. So I'm just gonna bring it back in, make sure that my pieces meet up. Squish a lot of glue in there. There we go. This is, again, this is a C cardstock. To me, it has something like a little bit of a coating on it. 
it doesn't glue, it doesn't, the glue doesn't grab as fast as it does with Cricut. I'll just say that. Cricut, it snaps it up in a heartbeat and holds it. So you have something that looks like this, okay? I'm gonna let that dry for a second. Now I've got it stuck. I've got too much glue. Don't do like me and mess it up. It's not gonna show, so it's gonna be okay. I'm just gonna open that up and let it dry. Oh, that's drying. You wanna take these two pieces and you're just gonna glue these two little tabs. Right here. That's all we're gonna do to this piece. I'm just gonna stick those down, make sure that they're even with your thumb holes. Give it a good press till it sticks. Make sure that it opens up, that this part isn't stuck. And that one's not folded all the way. Make sure yours meet up. I gotta I didn't have this problem yesterday. I think I missed my score line on that. That was all me. Okay. All me, all me. Much better. Make sure you hit your score line or it will be hanging out on the edge and you don't want that. Okay. So we just got it stuck, kind of made it like a little tube, okay? That's what you've got, just like that. And we're going to take our frame, oops, put it on the right way guys. I'm going to place that right on top. More subscribers! Yay! Welcome guys. So get your frame all glued up. And aligned. I'm a little bit off, I think. That's okay. We've got that. And next, you know what? I forgot to cut my second heart. I sure did. I'm going to go back, guys, because I wanted to emboss that. Oh well, I'm not going to go back and make there. No, I didn't. There it is. Yay! Got it. I haven't decided though which way I want to do it. I think I want to do it this way. Yeah. So I'm using double-sided paper. So I'm going to glue that. We're going to put that on panel number two. Make sure it aligns up. Then you have these two panels right here. And I think I'm going to do these opposite of the one I did yesterday. They're going to go on the front of those. Did I just do that? I did. Just gonna place that right on there. And guys, you can put these on before you glue that other panel. It doesn't matter. You can put all these pieces together individually. It's not gonna hurt anything. love this paper. This paper is Echo Park. 
Just going to give those a second to dry. I got these at Tuesday morning, guys. Um, it's Echo Park Paper Company. I got a couple of packs of these. It has some really pretty papers in it. So, if you get a chance, you can look for them online. And it has a whole sticker sheet, too. So, lots of fun stuff in those. Okay, those are dried. And that's the panel that came out of the center. We don't need that. Then you have this piece here, and it has some score lines on it. And we're about to get to that. I haven't decided yet if it's easier to do these now or later. But essentially what's going to happen is you are going to put these windows through here from the back, just like that. And then you're going to take this side and you're going to run it through, just like that. Okay, and that's what's going to make your mechanism. Okay. Did everybody see that? You guys need me to do it again? Just in case. But I think I'm going to put this on and see if we can put... We know that we can do it without, but I'm going to see if I can put it on. I put score lines on here to help you line this up. I'm just going to go ahead and go for it. And this is our little back piece that we laid that panel in and attached it. And I'm going to have to stand up. I don't. I forgot to turn my lights on. That's why I can't see. Hopefully it won't wash out too much for you guys. There we go. Much better for me. Okay, and make sure that you have your... Have it on straight. It doesn't really matter because you can flip this over at this point. And I'm just lining that up in those score lines. Give it a press down. And then we're, again, just going to slide these into those little strips there. Now we're going to come over this side and do the same thing. Okay. And now we have... How cute! Next we're going to work on these pieces. And this is just another spare piece. Like I said, don't, don't waste these guys. It's where they came out of your cutouts. And... I have the word love to go on this one that I cut from one of my dies. And this, guys, I have no clue what this came out of. Uh, it's just the word love. It's copper colored, so I'm going to say it's Spellbinders. Um, I've just had it for a while. Okay. So we're going to start with our big one in the back. And you're just going to bring it in. I hope you guys can see this. You may have to just bend it up a little bit. Just put an arch in it. You don't really bend it. And you're just going to push it through to this side. Then you're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You're just going to feed it through. Just like so. Okay. Then you're going to take the center one. And I'm not putting the word love on there yet. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to know where it's going to land. And then we're just going, you may have to push that second one just a little bit. One may be a little tighter fitting than the other, but if you work with it, you can pull it through there without actually bending your tabs. You don't want to bend those if you can avoid it. And then your third one, just going to pop it right in. I think that was the one that was most difficult for me to finagle just because I couldn't get a good hold on it. Just pull it right through. I did bend it a little bit, but that's okay. And now it's going to open and pop up. How cute! So, and you can bend it to the side at this point just a little bit just to work with it if you need to. I'm going to take my word here. 
We're just going to dab some glue. Ah, I'm getting sticky everywhere. How cute is that? And this was file was created by request. Um, Jamie asked me if I thought we could make this. So thank you, Jamie, for this idea. How cute. And it ends up being a six by four and a quarter card. So if you want to make yourself an envelope for it, if you want to put ribbons on it for the pulls, you can do that. You can put a belly band on there if you want. Um, tons of things you can do with this. So super cute, super easy. It was really easy to put together, don't you guys think? Super easy. So let's move over, back over, and let's do our box because that's heated up now. I know it is, and we're going to pop it in there. Let me make sure that you guys can see. I hope that you guys can see that long enough. So now I'm going to bring this back over, and it is hot, so you want to be careful. And we're just going to drop it in and close that clamp. And we are going to load our mat and push the go button. I like to do not leave mine unattended. I like to hold my cord so that I know exactly what's going on. Um, and I need to put in my score wheel. I didn't do that, so let's take that out. Put in the scoring. Oops, dropped it. And then hit go. Make sure everything is stuck down. And these are just the way that I do this, guys. These are my tips and tricks that I found because I don't let it cut over my foil because it ends up lifting up off the mat. And I'll show you how I fix that. Yes, you can get access to all of my files by becoming a monthly Kofi supporter or either a Patreon supporter. I really hate when it does my foil over my score. Usually it does my writing first, and I don't know why it's not doing my writing first this time, but it isn't. Yes, this is the foil quill. Yes, move your star wheels to the side when you're doing these. That way they don't track into the foil like my um, scoring wheels are doing. But again, I showed you the fix for that if your score wheels have to travel over first. Because it's hard to line it up. I'm going to show you guys when I get through here a way that you can do this so that you don't have to worry about it doing the scoring first over it. But it, it goes pretty quick, and we'll clean up any lines that it put on there. My other one I did the other way, and I'm going to show you how I did that when we get back over to the screen. It's trying to look now I am using the fine tip on this guys you have different size tips you have fine medium and I forgot what the other one is there are three tips three different sizes okay so it's asking me to load my blade so I'm gonna take this out load my blade 
I am opening my clamp. I'm going to remove that and unplug it. And before I hit go, I am going to try to finagle this up. I'm just going to go ahead and hit C. I'm going to hold on to this, okay, while my blade does its thing. And it should spit my mat back down, and I'm going to lift it. I was off a little bit. But you can see how it's done. Just make sure that you get yours in the right spot, not like me. I missed that side. But I'll do something to fix it. I'll stick a heart on there or something. Because I'm not going to throw my card stuck away. But you need to practice with this. Practice on some scraps doing that. And you guys can... That's just cutting. That's all it's doing now. I'm going to bring you guys back over. <clears throat> and let's go over to the screen and I'll show you how... I did this other one. It's almost done. Here we go. I'm going to spit it out and I'll let you guys see me clean that up again. So, how did I do that first one without getting it to do those wheels? First of all, there's a couple of things we can do. I don't know that it might work or not because I didn't try it. But all of my draw is up at the top, which means it should have done it first. For some reason, tonight, all of a sudden, it didn't go first, but the draw usually goes first. What you can do is come in here to this group, hit, oops, come over here and detach, and I am going to hide all of the drawing, okay? Go ahead and send that to the mat. Should be attached. Yep. It's all attached. Make sure the score lines are attached. Send it over. Hit make it. Let it cut. Let it score. And then eject the mat. But let me show you what I do when I do this. Okay? So let me go back over and show you. I don't know why that won't stay tightened. I apologize, guys. Hopefully you can see. When I eject, I'm just going to load it. We're just going to pretend that this finished cutting and scoring, and I have not done my foil quill yet. I eject that mat, but you can see it's right here on this edge. I'm holding it there. I put my fingers on it just lightly, and I hold it there, okay? And I don't move, and I take it, take my hand off. Then I will go back to my screen, and I, I've i unloaded my mat. It's going to, at the end, you know, when it says finish or dismiss, you can dismiss and come back. And then we're, I'm just going to, I'm having to cancel here because we already passed that screen. And I'm just going to say yes. Cancel. And now I'm going to come back over here and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to detach. I'm going to select my score lines. I'm going to hide those. Notice I'm not changing anything else out. I'm going to go back down here and I'm going to unhide my drawing. Arrange. I'm going to send my piece to the back. I'm going to select all. And I'm going to attach. And now I'm going to send it back over to make it and now it's going to do my drawing first when I hit continue it's going to want to draw this first because there are no score lines and that's how you can avoid it from getting the score lines on the foil lines on your material as well is and select it and just gonna say okay if it ever comes up there we go maybe I don't know why. Oh, I guess I have to actually load the mat. So I've loaded the mat. All I did was press the button and hold it in place without moving it. You saw that I had my finger pressure on it when I had my finger pressure on it when I loaded it again. And then you can hit 
make it whenever I don't know why it's not go oh it's one in flash so there we go let me go back over and show you guys I'm gonna take it back out just so you can see I wanted you to see on screen and over on the overhead as well so I haven't moved my mat because I held my fingers on it when it came out and now I'm just gonna hit load again and let it pull in I accidentally let it slide so mine may be off at that point you got to make sure that you're holding it and don't let it pull off to the side and then your foiling will be there it's go it won't be exact if your mat moves but something like this if it's off just a little bit you're not going to notice it it's not going to show um, let's go back over here and I'll show you because I did this one that exact way and it's not off <laughs> it, it's just dead on so you can do it and that's the way I did it I let it foil by itself and I let it score and cut by itself so there's a few ways of doing it and that's the way that I do mine so you know play around with it yeah if you just got your maker Elizabeth you want to you don't want to do that if, if your warranty's out it's out and that's not gonna change anything um, but you you never want to leave a tool like this unattended anyway. You don't want to walk off and let it be cutting or scoring or foiling while you walk away. And I missed that right there. So I will probably take my silver Cricut pen, my glitter pen, and, and fix the rest of my V and then hand draw that in there. Or either I'll stick something over it, a ribbon, something. I won't let it go to waste. We're just going to pull that off of there, off that mat. And this is a fun little box. I don't know if you guys can see on these score lines. This is like a little Y here. Don't pay, don't even worry about those two down pieces. You're just going to fold that score and let it take care of itself. And you can do those on the end as well. So let's just start with the one outside here. And fold that and go all the way up past your diamond cutout. Okay. And then... Go ahead and do the next one. Make sure you get it at the top too because you don't want to stop right there. You gotta use your bone folder, make a good crisp line. Then we got the third one. And then you have your tab here. Okay. And the only two that have that indention are these two, first and third, okay? And we're just going to kind of pinch that, try to get it right there on it. Just give it a little pinch right there on that score line. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be exact. We're going to get it. This piece right here, there's a score line that goes under these diamonds. And I don't use the bone folder on those. We just want to give them a little bit of a push. That's going to give it that rounded look that we have on here. If you crease it, it too much, you're going to have a crisp line instead of a rounded line. But that's all that score line does is just to give it a, that rounded look. And then you have a tab at the bottom. Three tabs. And then you have another tab right here. And this tab has cuts in it on each side. You may have to give it a little tug right there if that little tick on the end is not cut through. It's 
just about a quarter of an inch. It's not much. That one's three. And then you're just going to place glue on this tab. going to line this up and I like to start at the top to make sure that that diamond cutout is lined up where it needs to be just let that take a hold make sure your tabs not in the way and then line up the bottom making sure you keep it square down here so if you've got it square on both of these you should be fine and then I take my bone folder and run right on the inside and get that tab. Just give it a good press down and then you can fold it flat. Just want to make sure no glue squishes out of there. And that's why I take my bone folder first. You can either glue this or just leave it. It's nice and snug and it'll stay closed at the bottom. But if you're putting anything heavy in it, run yourself a bead of glue right there. Take your bone folder go inside them and press it down. I missed mine. I don't usually glue them. Just wanted to show you guys. Because I just pop them in. Again, if you're putting anything heavy in it, you want to put your little bit of glue on there. Then you're just going to press in those two centers that you gave the light press to and you can see how it comes together. Brings it all together right there. And I closed mine with ribbon. I like to tie away from me. So I'm going to flip it around. Then I get my bunny ears, as Jamie calls them. And tighten it down. How cute is that? Of course, you'll want to play with your bow and trim it up, all that kind of stuff. But guys, you could get one of those little bitty wine bottles in here. You could get chocolates in here. All sorts of stuff. And I'll just tell you, organza ribbon doesn't tie as tight as the silk type does or your gross grain ribbons. So keep that in mind. I'll have to retie that and get it a little bit tighter. But it will close up your box with your ribbon. And then you can decorate it with Nuvo Drops or stickles or anything like that. Let me make sure that... I do that. I want to make sure it's coming out right. If you want to put washi tape on the bottom, I suggest you do it before. And I made a mess of those. Those came out way too much. Um, make sure you do it before you seal your box up like I just did. I forgot it. I forgot my trim. We'll put some on there anyway. I'm just trying to flatten out my Nuvo drops. They're a little thick. I don't know why it's a brand new bottle. There we go. So let's correct my boo boo. I'm using the stickers here. You can use washi tape, anything like that that you want. Um, I just love these. I'm going to hide my boo-boo right here. With that sticker. That's a little much too far over. It's going the wrong way. That's the... Oh, no, I didn't. Well, that one is going to be right there in those Nuvo drops. Guys, don't make a boo-boo like me. Just going to leave it. Oh, uh, let's see. Like 
That one's going the wrong way. I really liked this one best. Of course, you would want to run it all the way around the box, not just part of the box. You get the idea. I done messed this box up three times, so it just isn't meant to be. It'll have to go in the scrap pile. That's the way it should look. <laughs> not like this. So, that completes how to do your shadow box card, slider card, and the little box that goes with it. I hope you guys have enjoyed the tutorial. Enjoy the file. You didn't see my mess, Elizabeth. I did. I dropped that right into my Nuvo Drops. I was trying to be so careful and not touch them and dropped it right in there. And, and then it wouldn't come off. Let's see. There it goes. It's messy. You know what I'll do? I'll cut a panel and put a panel on it. That's what I'll do. I'll just cut a panel, cover it up. All is not lost, except a couple of stickers. Always a way to, to go over. The final box, Falcon, here it is right here. This is it. Same box. This one I didn't mess up on. Oh, I am so sorry, guys. All that time. Dang it. Oh, well. Let's see. You guys want me to cut another one real quick and show you how it goes together? I do it at least once a show, don't I? It's a really quick one. I'll cut another one just so you guys can see how it goes together because I made a boo-boo. Let's do a pink one. Oh, a purple. Let's do purple. I love purple. It'll only take a minute to cut it. This box goes together so quick. I apologize. And let me get my cardstock set for medium more. Gonna pop in my score wheel. I would say I can't believe I did that, but I can believe that I did that. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Nancy. I do apologize. I am so bad about that. This one's just not going to have any writing on it. Well, it, we'll do the pen, but um, it's not going to have writing on it because I didn't do it. Let me we'll have to use the ink pen instead. Let me pop in my adapter instead of foil because you guys saw how I did the foil already. Since I messed up and dropped that in there and forgot my stickers, I want to use that other sticker anyway. Let me... Oh, wait. Washi tape. I have some pretty washi tape. Let's see. I want one that's a little bit different in color. There we go. How pretty is that? Yes, it is a great giveaway, um, Robin. Make sure you guys are doing that while this is drawing and scoring and all of that stuff. Again, it only takes a minute to put this together, so we will do this one over. 
See, this time that drew first. Uh, I don't have my scores on it. Because <laughs> I had changed them. So I'm just going to hide my drawing. On this one, gonna detach, hide the drawing, gonna attach my score lines, arrange, send it to the back. And here we go. We are cutting or scoring and then cutting. There we go. So, what else is everybody else working on? Um, let's go ahead while this is cutting uh, and talk about what is going to be going on Saturday. We've had a lot of requests about doing, um, let's see, wet, uh, the wet method vinyl. I think that's what we're going to do. Let me go pop over. And pull that up for you guys. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the wet method done. Just pulling this up for you guys. This video here is a very, very, very good video. Um, I'm going to get that link for you. She does a very good video, but I thought maybe you guys might want to see something more current that wasn't on a mirror, but something like on a picture frame where um, you're going to get, um, like if you want to put it on the back side, um, things like that. So I thought that I would... Here is her video if you want to watch that one. But I thought that we would do our own on Saturday and show you how to do that wet method on your vinyl with layers um, or on glass so where people see the air bubbles. That's what I'm trying to think of. So that you don't see those air bubbles. Um, is that something that you guys might be interested in? Is seeing that on Saturday? Yeah, it, it's so much when you're going on the back side of glass or if you're layering images, uh, not so much on, it's really helpful on the back side because you get all those air bubbles and sometimes they go away and sometimes they don't. Um, and if you pop them with the pen, sometimes that shows and sometimes it doesn't. So I figured that we would show you guys how to do the wet method like on a photo frame. Um, like she's doing, well she's doing it on a mirror here. But I thought because she did the mirror and it's such a good video, why don't we do one on a picture frame? If you guys would be interested in that. So we, we can do that if you guys want to, and we'll do that on Saturday. With, um, I have a photo frame. Let me go show you that while that's finished cutting. I'm going to make sure that we transition over that time, this time. Something like this, because you may want to put your photo here, but you may want to have vinyl instead of having the vinyl on the top. You may want to put your vinyl where your picture is going to go over it on the back and then it would be showing through the front but easy to clean so that you don't have to worry with your vinyl. So that was my thought for Saturday. And here we are. We're going to pretend we foiled this, guys. 
and we're just going to go through the motions again really quickly. If you've ever done a box, you've probably got this. You're just going to fold on your scores. Don't worry about the one there yet. You can just pinch it if you want. We're going to go to the second one. We're going to come up to the third one. We're going to do that fourth one. That's our glue tab. You have some score lines right here. Don't worry with those. You want to fold these here in the middle of the diamond. That's it. You want to fold those. And then this tab, you can just kind of give it a little pinch right there. Don't worry about that little Y score. It'll take care of itself. And then there's another one here on the first and the third tab. Just want to make sure you get those even. Just give it a little pinch. You can finish doing it once you put the box together. Don't fold on this score line. It's just scored to give it enough give to give it that rounded look when it's closed up and tied to give it that slope okay so you don't want to fold that then fold your tabs at the bottom and then you have one right here on your closure tab fold that. make sure that the ticks right there on that end cut through that one did That one didn't get that one. Over. And then you're just going to, before you put, if you're going to put any washi tape or decoration, you want to do it now. This is the time to do that. Try to get it on there straight so that it, when it meets up on the other side, it's where it's supposed to be. I hope I have it straight. If I don't, oh well, I tried. Just gonna fold that over. And I know I don't. I'm, I'm the world's worst about getting this on straight. We're going to say it is. It may not be, but we're going to say that it is. And now we're going to glue all the way down this tab. Okay. Bring this up. Line it up at the top. Make sure your diamond's all lined up. And then grab the bottom down here. Probably should have left that washi a little bit longer. And see, mine's off. It, it's always off. I probably should have checked it before gluing, but... And then just run your bone folder in there. Give it a press down. Make sure you don't have any squishy glue. No glue squishes out, then you're good to push it down this way and give it a press okay. and you're just going to close the bottom up you can put glue on there if you want to if you're going to put something heavy in there but it doesn't need it and then you're just going to squeeze that top shut right there my score is off my fold is off my score isn't there we go and then you're going to close it up with some ribbon. Super cute, super easy. Yeah, it's just my OCD kicks in on those kind of things when I'm giving it to someone, Susan. When I'm on video and stuff like that, if I have a little bit of a boo-boo, it doesn't bother me so much. I like for it to go right, but I like for you guys to see how to fix mistakes, too. 
just going to pop that back out. And again, you want to play with your ribbon. I didn't get this on there right because I had it trimmed off for the other box where I had it tied. So play around with your bow, get your bow like you want, then trim your tails and you'll be good to go. How cute! How simple and easy was that? Well, tons of things you can do with these. I do apologize I forgot to change that camera. I need a bell or something that goes ding, ding, ding when I forget. See, I don't have any sound except my clicking of my mouse You got and the sound of my own voice. <laughs> if you guys could, I could hear you guys, it would help. <laughs> All right. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, my Kofi supporters, my moderators. Guys, do not forget to enter the giveaway craftingwithapril.co and we will be live again on Saturday. We will be doing the wet method on the picture frame. So um, you guys will be able to see that and practice it. So get yourself a frame, something that I like this because it's acrylic. You could probably no, it's too thick. This is too thick for engraving, but I would be scared my engraving would be off on this anyway. But super fun frame get yourself an acrylic frame or a glass frame so that you can practice with it the card stock is a 65 pound um i believe this is 80 pound the, well the echo park is 65 let me put it that way echo park pack is 65 this right here doesn't say on there, but it feels like 65 to me. So, this is the American Crafts cardstock, and it is 80 pound. All right. Thank you guys for joining me. I appreciate it. Again, I apologize about being off camera with the box, but we do have it at the end, so super, super, super fun. You guys make your versions and show them to me in the groups, and I will catch you at noon on Saturday.